Welcome to Ancient Earth, where every fossil tells a story and every bone holds a whisper from the deep past. You are standing on the muddy bank of a vast, slow-moving river under the hot North African sun of 97 million years ago. The air is a humid blanket, thick with the smell of decay and wet earth from the surrounding mangrove forests. The water is the color of tea, murky and foreboding. There is no sound of footsteps, no tremor in the ground to announce the arrival of a giant. There is only a disturbance on the water's surface. A shape slices through the current, a towering fan of skin and bone, six feet high. It moves with an unnerving grace, a living sail navigating a prehistoric waterway. Ever wonder what it truly felt like to stand in the shadow of a living giant? For this one, you wouldn't be looking up into the trees, but out across the water. So, before you get comfortable, take a moment to like the video and subscribe, but only if you find the journey we're about to take is a valuable one. Let us know in the comments where you are watching from, and tell us which prehistoric creature fascinates you the most. Now, let's journey back in time and uncover the story of a lost world. The creature attached to that incredible sail breaks the surface. Its head is impossibly long and narrow, like that of a crocodile, and its conical teeth glisten as water streams from its jaws. This is Spinosaurus aegyptiacus, the spine lizard from Egypt. For decades, we tried to imagine it as just another land-based predator that happened to have a bizarre ornament on its back. But the truth, pieced together from lost fossils and incredible new discoveries, reveals something far stranger. This wasn't a land animal that occasionally went for a swim. This was a river monster, a dinosaur that had taken the first evolutionary steps back into the water. Its story is one of the most dramatic in all of paleontology, a tale of discovery, destruction, and breathtaking rediscovery. The story of Spinosaurus begins not in the water, but with a sense of profound loss. To understand the animal we know today, we have to travel back to 1,912. A German paleontologist named Ernst Stromer is leading an expedition into the Baharia oasis in the Egyptian desert. There, his team unearths a series of puzzling bones belonging to a colossal, unknown predator. He finds immense vertebrae with neural spines taller than a man, a piece of a strange, narrow jaw, and other fragments that paint a picture of a truly enormous beast. Stromer carefully studies, illustrates, and describes the fossils, naming it Spinosaurus aegypticus. He recognizes its uniqueness, but has only a partial skeleton to work with. The precious, one-of-a-kind specimen is transported back to Munich and placed on display, the only evidence of this incredible creature in the entire world. For three decades, it remains a scientific curiosity. Then comes the Second World War. Stromer, an outspoken critic of the Nazi regime, foresees the danger and repeatedly pleads with the museum's director, a staunch Nazi party member, to move the priceless fossils to a secure location. His pleas are ignored. In April of 1944, an Allied bombing raid strikes Munich. The museum takes a direct hit, and in the ensuing firestorm, the entire original skeleton of Spinosaurus is obliterated. Every single bone is turned to ash and dust. With Stromer's specimen gone, the spine lizard became a ghost. For more than half a century, it existed only in Stromer's meticulous drawings and old photographs. It was a frustrating enigma, a giant known only by its shadow, 
leaving paleontologists to wonder if the secrets of its strange body and life were lost to history forever. The search for a new Spinosaurus would become a paleontological holy grail. For decades, the ghost of Spinosaurus haunted paleontologists. Fragments were found here and there, a piece of a snout, an isolated tooth, but nothing substantial enough to truly resurrect the giant. That all changed in the 21st century. Fossil hunters and scientists Following clues in Stromer's old maps and exploring new sites in Morocco's famous Kem Kem beds began to unearth the bones that would finally give the spine lizard its body back. And what a bizarre body it was. The new picture that emerged was even stranger than Stromer could have imagined. First, the skull. It was confirmed to be incredibly long and slender, approaching six feet in length, it was filled with smooth, conical teeth, lacking the steak knife serrations of predators like T-Rex. These were the teeth of a fish trapper, designed to puncture and grip slippery prey, not to shear through flesh and bone. Then came the revelations about its proportions, which shattered the mold for two-legged predatory dinosaurs. While it was immense in length, at over 50 feet, it was longer than any T-Rex. It was not built like one. The new fossils revealed that its hind legs were shockingly short and paddle-like, with broad, flat claws. These were not the legs of a creature built for running down prey on land. In fact, computer models suggest that on land, it would have been somewhat clumsy a front-heavy animal perhaps needing to use its strong arms to steady itself. Its center of mass was shifted forward, making traditional bipedal locomotion awkward. This was no longer the sleek, land-walking super predator depicted in movies. This was something else entirely. It had the skull of a crocodile, the sail of a pelicosaur, the arms of a powerhouse, and the stubby back legs of an animal that clearly spent a great deal of its time supported by the buoyancy of water. The ghost was finally taking shape, and it looked like nothing anyone had ever seen before. An animal this strange can only be explained by an equally strange environment. The world of Spinosaurus, 97 million years ago, was not a landscape of forests and plains. It was a vast, sprawling river delta system, a network of deep channels, mangrove swamps, and coastal estuaries that stretched across North Africa. This was the River of Giants. Forget any modern analog. This may have been the most dangerous aquatic ecosystem in Earth's history. The murky waters were a crowded, lethal soup of colossal creatures. You would find colacanths, ancient lobe-finned fish, but here they grew to the size of a car. You would find Anchopristus, a giant sawfish whose snout, or rostrum, was a seven-foot-long weapon studded with barbed, razor-sharp teeth. Giant lungfish, huge turtles, and crocodiles the size of buses patrolled these waterways. This was the ecological niche that Spinosaurus was perfectly adapted to exploit. On land, it would have faced stiff competition from other enormous predators, like the T-Rex-sized Carcharodontosaurus, the shark-toothed lizard, which ruled the terrestrial realm. A clumsy, short-legged Spinosaurus would have been at a major disadvantage there. But by evolving to specialize in the aquatic realm, it carved out a unique role for itself, becoming the undisputed apex predator of the river system. It didn't need to compete with Carcharodontosaurus for land-based prey, because it had access to a buffet of giant fish that no other dinosaur could hunt. Its entire body plan, once so puzzling, now makes perfect sense. It was the product of an evolutionary arms race in the water, not on the land, 
It was a dinosaur that abandoned the terrestrial rat race and became a kingfisher the size of a whale. The danger in this world wasn't just on the shore. It was lurking right below the surface. With a body built for the water and a river teeming with giant fish, the evidence for Spinosaurus's diet becomes crystal clear when you look at its specialized toolkit. Let's return to that long, narrow snout. Close examination of the fossil skulls reveals that the tip is riddled with dozens of small openings, or foramina. Paleontologists realized these pits are nearly identical to those found on the snouts of modern crocodiles and alligators. In living crocodilians, these pits house sensitive pressure receptors, allowing them to detect minute changes in water pressure and movement. This gives them the extraordinary ability to sense a fish swimming nearby even in total darkness or murky water without ever seeing it. Spinosaurus had the same sensory system. It could dip the end of its snout into the water and wait, effectively feeling its environment for the telltale vibrations of approaching prey. The chemical evidence provides another powerful line of support. Scientists can analyze the oxygen isotopes trapped in the enamel of fossilized teeth. The specific ratio of these isotopes varies depending on whether an animal lived primarily on land or in water. When the isotopes from Spinosaurus teeth were compared to other animals from its environment, the results were definitive. Its chemical signature didn't match land-based dinosaurs like Carcharodontosaurus. Instead, it closely matched the signatures of the local turtles and crocodiles. It was metabolizing the same kind of oxygen found in animals that spent their lives in the river. If that wasn't enough, Paleontologists have even found direct, if circumstantial, evidence. A fossil of one of its close relatives, Baryonyx, was found with the scales of a large fish preserved in its gut cavity. And a Spinosaurus vertebra was discovered with the tooth of a giant sawfish, Onchopristus, lodged within it, a clear sign of a violent encounter between the two river giants. Spinosaurus was not just an occasional fisherman. It was a dedicated, full-time master of the aquatic hunt. For all the new discoveries, two features continue to define Spinosaurus. Its sail and, thanks to a stunning recent find, its tail. The sail remains a subject of intense debate formed by a series of incredibly elongated neural spines rising from the vertebrae. It was a fragile, skin-covered structure. What was it for? One theory is thermoregulation. The vast surface area could have been used to absorb heat from the morning sun to warm its massive body, or to dissipate excess heat into the breeze like a giant radiator. Another popular theory is display. The sail could have been a magnificent billboard, perhaps brightly colored, used to signal its fitness to potential mates or to intimidate rivals and other predators. It would have made the animal look immense and imposing, both from the land and from within the water. It may well have been a combination of both, a display structure that also offered a thermoregulatory advantage. But the most revolutionary discovery came in 2020. A team of paleontologists unearthed a remarkably complete Spinosaurus tail, the first one ever found, and it was nothing like what they expected. Theropod dinosaurs typically have long, stiff, tapering tails that act as a counterbalance. Spinosaurus did not. Its tail had long, slender spines on both the top and bottom, creating a deep, flattened, oar-like structure, more like the tail of a crested newt or a tadpole than a dinosaur. This was not a counterbalance. This was an engine. Biomechanical analysis showed that this fin tail could move side to side with powerful, undulating motions, 
capable of propelling its massive body through the water with incredible force. This was the final, definitive piece of the puzzle. Spinosaurus was not just a waiting predator, dipping its snout in from the riverbank. It was an active, pursuit predator in the water column. It was a swimming dinosaur, a creature that had evolved a powerful, propulsive tail to hunt in a way no one had ever thought possible for a dinosaur. The story of Spinosaurus is more than the story of just one dinosaur. It is the story of how a single, radical animal can force us to rewrite the rules of what we thought was possible. For over 150 years of paleontology, a fundamental assumption was that non-avian dinosaurs, from the smallest raptors to the largest sauropods, were creatures of the land. The seas were ruled by marine reptiles like mosasaurs and plesiosaurs, but dinosaurs it was thought, kept their feet firmly on the ground. Spinosaurus shatters that assumption. It represents a bold and successful evolutionary leap into a new realm. It demonstrates that the dinosaurs were just as innovative and adaptable as any other group of animals in Earth's history, capable of producing a specialist as unique as a polar bear or a killer whale. Its legacy is one of constant scientific revolution. The journey from Stromer's lost ghost to the movie monster of the early 2000s second, and finally to the semi-aquatic, paddle-tailed predator we know today, is a perfect illustration of the scientific process. Each new fossil, each new study, peels back another layer, refining our understanding and replacing old ideas with more accurate and often more wondrous new ones. Spinosaurus has forced paleontologists to look at other dinosaurs with fresh eyes, to question old dogmas, and to wonder what other surprises the fossil record holds. It is no longer just the spine lizard. It is a symbol of adaptation, a testament to the power of new evidence, and the first confirmed semi-aquatic dinosaur. It stands as a powerful reminder that the ancient world was far more complex and surprising than we can imagine, and that even a giant lost to the fires of war can be resurrected to fundamentally change everything we thought we knew. The journey back from the river of giants, from the murky, dangerous waters of Cretaceous Africa, is a journey through a century of scientific struggle and revelation. The image of the Spinosaurus, once a ghost known only from drawings, has been painstakingly resurrected, not as a monster, but as something far more incredible, a testament to evolution's boundless creativity. It forces us to reconsider the very definition of a dinosaur and to imagine a world where these animals dominated not only the land, but the waterways as well. The spine lizard, with its crocodile-like face and its powerful fin tail, is a profound reminder that the story of the past is never truly finished. It is continuously being rewritten with every new discovery, waiting in the desert rock to challenge our perceptions and expand our sense of wonder for the magnificent lost worlds of ancient Earth.